Hello and welcome. As I mentioned at the end of my previous video, I've been playing around with stable diffusion for character artwork. As always, before getting into the process, I'll show a few of the finished pieces for you all to see if this level of fidelity or stylization is something you'd be interested in. So here are the rest of the images. If you didn't know, as of today or this morning, uh, Automatic 1111's repository was updated with the Textual Inversion tab. Previously, I had tried out Textual Inversion using a different repository by the name of Nikolai something something for Windows. And then it outputted an embedding file, which I then brought into Automatic's uh, repository. Um, now it's integrated in, so I'll be going through it live. So I don't even know what this will give me, but first let's just follow the steps. Uh, create a new embedding, so I'll call this uh, my favorite um, fantasy, my favorite fantasy artist, fantasy artist, artist. And this is automatic, automatic repo repository, and I already trained it once, but now I'll just do it again because I actually trained it using um, a different model, not with the stable diffusion model. And to note, this time I'm not training it on the stable diffusion model, the pure one. I'm training it on a combined. Uh, version of waifu diffusion 1.2 and stable diffusion 1.4 so that's what I'm using and for initialization text I'm going to do female um, character fantasy character design yeah that looks good and I'll show you what data set or what images I'll be training it on after I press this and let me just check the console to see if yes so my i, I checked my command uh command window and or my terminal and yes it created my textual inversion embedding so now um pre-process pre-process images i'll show you what uh the images style that i like so let me turn this on Okay, so this is a data set that I prepared. There's um, some art from artists I like. Um, some of my own art is in here. So these a uh, few more images of mine are in here. Um, some of them, um, yeah, if you know Krenz Kushart, he was one of the prompts I used in the previous video. Another artist who I really like is Choco Fing R, a Korean artist. Um, there's some Arc Knights in here, Lean, Dusk, um, Octopath Traveler, and um, what else? There's some uh, Tokyo Ghoul, these, and just a collection of other um, Korean artists whose styles I really um, like, but it's not something that I would normally pursue on my own. Oh, and can't forget, um, I have some Drakengard. 3 or Dragon Dragoon. I really like them. Or I really like the art from that series. Yeah, so this is more or less what the data set looks like Kingdom Hearts. Um, I forgot who drew this. Um, Akia Kageichi. He draws a lot of clowns. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much it. And some other artists you probably, I'm not sure if other people are familiar oh yeah, familiar with like SWDE, uh, it, it's a female who draws on Pixiv back in the day. Yeah, so this is the set that I'm sampling from that I curated um, in my free time. And so before going into this part down here, you have to choose a source directory for your images. So I already have that one. 
here and then you also need a destination for your um, images they'll be cropped down to 512 by 512 for training purposes so now quick pre-process it'll go through it it's pretty fast and while we wait for that we can go down here train and embedding so choose the embedding that you created earlier as I mentioned previously, these first three, my favorite fantasy artists without the automatic tag, those are trained outside of um, automatic repository because uh, he didn't, or he or she didn't have this implemented uh, previously. It's pretty new, just came out today. So just follow the convention. My favorite fantasy artists, automatic V2, it should be the same as what's up here. Learning rate is 0 0.005. Uh, I think this is fine. If you go zero lower on your learning rate, you will take a long time to converge. And if you go too high, you might uh, never converge. So don't do that. So data set, uh, this data set directory should be this destination directory that you have up here. And then we have textual inversion and uh, prompt template file style file words. I don't didn't change this because uh, yeah, this if you open up what this file looks like, it has it basically uh, directs the style. It says like a portrait of something in this style, a portrait or a sculpture of something in this style. This basically assists the textual inversion training phase. So. Uh, I think everything here looks good. Once again, I want to reiterate, I'm not using the pure stable diffusion uh, model. I'm using um, the combined model of waifu diffusion 1.2 and st uh, stable diffusion 1.4. It's a key point. You can train it on whatever. I even tried it on the trin art one, but the images I got were um, not that favorable to me, so I'm just going to retrain it again. So here we go. Just double checking everything. 100,000 max steps. Share, why not? Okay, let's go train. And let's just check this out. Preparing data set. Let me check my console. Yep, looks like it's running. Yeah, and we're off to the races. I just wanted to clarify how I made the merged model or checkpoint. So in Automatics Web UI, if you go to this tab, Checkpoint Merger, uh, you'll see all this stuff here. What you should do, or what I did, is for primary model name, I use the standard diffusion 1.4, the vanilla version. And then for secondary model name, I used waifu diffusion 1.3. And for interpolation amount, I put it at 0 0.5, so half of each will be merged into a new checkpoint. And I didn't change the interpolation method, I just kept it at weighted sum. So uh, if you press run, you should get a dialog on the right here or in your console saying that it's working on combining your checkpoints. So that's how I made the custom uh, checkpoint or model that I'm, I'll be showing later in this video. So it's been about 2 hours and 47 minutes, 2 hours, 48 minutes, and I'm about 31% of the way through on training the textual inversion and the loss is around 0 0.1 and 0 .1 or 0 0.15 which is kind of high by machine learning standards. Usually you want loss of like 0 0.001 or 0 0.02. So this loss, I'm not sure how much of a difference it makes. But yeah, the max steps count is fairly high. Um, from the paper, it said that you should only run it on three to five images. And with steps of like 5,000 or 7,000. But 
I've seen anecdotal evidence of other people running it on uh, folders with like a hundred images or several hundred and with uh, training steps comparable to a hundred thousand. So I'll just keep waiting and see what this gives me. Okay, so now is the fun part. After training on the embedding, I have a embedding with the style that I like. And it's called uh, My Favorite Fantasy Artist Automatic V7. So this is what it's called if I put in the prompt here. But make sure that when you put it in your prompt, you put it around these arrows like this. Otherwise, it won't be read. So before I start putting in prompts and changing settings, I'll put in the image that I sketched or painted out. Uh, I've already done a few test runs with this one. Uh, the original image was did not have such... Um, uh, it didn't have the lights painted in like this. It was more of a flat image. But I went back in Photoshop and painted in some more lights. So there's like a nice rim light going on the right side here. As well as a fill light filling in these darker areas. For sampling steps, I'm going to go up to 70, I guess. Yeah, sure. Euler for sampling method. Height and width, make sure you change to something that you're using. For me, it's 704 by 576. Uh, I'll turn on Restore Faces, and just to be sure, if you want to use Restore Faces, go to Settings here, and you should have a, a setting for face restoration right here. Uh, I set it to 0 0.75, and I click Code Former, and then click Apply Settings. I've already applied them previously, so they're not changing here. but. I find that 0.75 on code form or doing image to image is quite helpful. Uh, CFG, I'll go like 14 or 15, doesn't matter too much once you get that high. Uh, and denoising, I'll go 0.5, so I want at least 50% of this image to be changed somehow, or 50% of the latent space. Okay, and then. For the prompt, I've, I'm going to try something that I've already tried before, but I'm just, I'll am just i paste it here and then I'll explain um, some of my reasoning behind it. So it's oil painting of beautiful female sage in Alexander McQueen fashion. So sage is like, I, originally I, you can cha interchange this word sage with other like fantasy job archetypes such as adventure, rogue, knight, um, whatever. I tried quite a different uh, variety but yeah and for fashion I had Alexander, I have Alexander McQueen here right now. Previously I had um, gothic lolita, victorian, steampunk, streetwear, and I, I tried out um, an array of things. And then most importantly here, uh, the textual inversion that I trained. This is the name of my embedding. And I already showed previously in the beginning of the video how I created this and how um, what, what my favorite fantasy artists look like or their, what their artwork looks like. So... Uh, more importantly, I have this Nemo art painted by Nemo art. Um, Nemo art is an artist whose work I follow. He's a Korean, or he or she's a Korean concept artist and illustrator on ArtStation. And in my opinion, um, they're like one of the more um, unique portrait artists out there or I mostly see portrait work from this person, so I really like um, the style. After that, I have pretty and slim face. I already uh, here I have the um, girl I drew here. She has kind of a roundish face. I wonder if I could slim it down a little bit. And other than that, I have a few more names here. 
The reason I added these, like Makoto Shinkai, if you know the movies like Weathering With You, or Your Name, or if you're an OG, 5 centimeters per second, yeah, um, he, he's the director of those movies, Studio Ghibli, James Gilliard, and Ate Gailin. So these are, um, like the last two names here, they have uh, am ambience or this atmosphere in their work that is very like watercolor-esque and like desaturated. Um, I, I was wondering if that would be integrated in and from my test it does seem like that. And other than that I have some uh, tokens at the end that aren't like super important. Like you could even take them out if you want. So Final Fantasy fourteen. Sir Pieri, he's like a art, uh, tr classical artist. Choco Fing R, another Korean concept artist. Um, I put in VTuber just for fun and then intricate. These don't, I haven't found these to really make a difference. And then next is the negative prompt, which is, um, I'll just paste in my negative prompt here. Uh, there's not so much, like, I've curated these um, uh, negative prompts from my own tests. If there's something that I don't like in the image that comes out, I just say, get rid of this. So, yeah. Not too much to explain here. And there's two commas here. Alright. And... Before I go any further, I'm also going to turn on one more setting, which I think is kind of important for me. Uh, it's called loopback. Um, before I was trying this without loopback, but now that I was thinking about it, I was thinking, oh, um, I might loopback um, takes the output of this image to image and feeds it back into image to image, same prompts, everything, and runs it again. And it runs it as many times as you set your loop here. So uh, I'll just change the denoising a little higher, 1.02. So yeah, I'll run it once and then I'll explain why I use loop back or how I think this can benefit the workflow. So the generation has finished and there's four pretty decent images here. And that's consistent with the loop set here, which is four. I had my denoising strength at one. You can go between 0 0.9 and 1.1. Uh, the reason I keep it around one or close to one is that if you do so, the changes aren't too drastic on each subsequent image. So the second image depends on the first image, and the third image depends on the second image. The advantage here is that as long as the poses aren't too drastic, if there's an image in which the part you don't like, for instance, or for example, in this image, I like most of what's going on here. However, this chest area of the clothing seems pretty bland compared to other portions of this image. So I could maybe bring this part back into this image after I take it back into Photoshop. Or I can take this part back or this part. So in Photoshop now, I brought in the images from the loopback generation and I've put them in uh, groups so the very first image is this one then we have the second one third one and fourth one I'm not really sure hold on yeah fourth one so I'm mainly going to be focused on the first two because I think the uh, faces and design look the best on those and I've gone ahead and added the hue saturation adjustment layers as a clipping layer so you can see it's a little too saturated in here if 
but once I add this hue saturation adjustment it's a little bit better and for the second one I've also added a hue adjustment layer so like that uh, I'm currently thinking that I want the second image to be the um, the, f the main base and I'll bring in the images or I'll bring in the first image as the uh, adjustment so uh, right off the bat when I'm looking at this base image there's a few things that bother me the first thing is this eye on the right is not right the ears a little bit wrong and there's this stray thing over here on the left that seems a bit off so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that image this one and I'll tackle this one first here I'm going to select the this tool spot healing brush and just brush this part out um, sometimes you won't get something nice so change your brush size yep just lightly getting rid of that part and it looks like it's the background is leaking into this so yeah that looks a little bit better as for the eye or let me see how I want to do this first I'll disable this hue, sat later, hue saturation layer I'm going to I guess I think I'm going to first liquefy this so make sure I have a backup copy and then control shift X for me okay so you can see the change that I'm making here moving the eye down a little like that I think I moved it down too much though yeah going to just refine the selection here actually I have to bring up the bottom of the eye a little bit more yep okay that looks better and I think it's time to do some painting now so paint out that Part. That. Mm. Going to switch brushes. Okay, I'm going to merge this down and then now I'm going to use the mixer brush. Let's clean this up a little. And Yeah, that looks okay for now. So I think I'm going to liquefy this part of the arm or jacket. This part doesn't look exactly that right down here. Maybe I should just 
clone stand or er, spot healing tool this out. Which gives like some interesting results. Which is fine. I think I'm going to liquefy again. I want the arm to be in more. How does that look? Better. So get that in more. This looks okay for me. There's some errors down here. So also spot healing tool that out. And a bit more. So now there's the ear. Hmm. Uh oh, dirt. Didn't really want to do an ear study today, but So I have a pretty decent base now that I like. The last thing to do is to maybe give it a once over, make sure everything is as we expect. So maybe this is not right down here. And also I wanna go back and change how these feathers are working. I want some more like disorder in this area. This is just too uniform, so bring in the clone, or not the clone, the uh, spot healing brush. Something like that. Yes, I like that jaggy edge there. Okay, now to move on to the final stage of image making which is final touches. I'm going to start off, make a new layer, control alt shift E to combine everything. Now I'm going to go to filter other high pass 
Uh, keep the radius slow, like I, I use 1.3 and then put it on high pass. Or, sorry, hard light. So you can see that it sharpens up the image quite a bit. Okay, now that we have that. Okay, the next thing I want to do is some additional lighting. Probably. So the way I like to do this is same logic, con uh, new layer, control alt shift E, and everything's copied to that new layer. I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, blur it up a little bit or a lot. Maybe something like that and then put it on screen and then mask it out. So this will kind of be like the highlights or depending on how you want to use it, you can add light wherever you want it. So for me, uh, that's a little too strong. I'll add it around the character just to give it a bit of atmosphere. Yeah, see how it really like makes the character glow a little, which is a nice effect. It also helps like erase or like desaturate other parts of the image. Okay. Now, okay, now that's done. Once again, new layer, control alt shift E. And this time it'll be going into the camera raw filter and making changes based on that. And yep, this is what you, I have after camera raw filter. Now I'll check the values. It's okay, but I'd like to bring up some I'll make another folder and this will be adjustments. I'm going to go with curves. I'm going to bring up the highlights a little. Let's see. Yeah, and maybe bring down the darks. Actually, I'm going to make another curves layer and then bring down the darks in this one. But when I bring down the darks in this, I'm going to invert the mask and paint in where I want the darks to be. I want the f a face to have the focal emphasis, so I'll be painting in darkness on everything that's not the face. Like so. Like this. So we focus on the face a lot more. And see how I like that. Yeah, it's looking fine. Lastly, what I want to do is add a bit of painterliness. So I'll create a new layer, Control Shift Alt E once again. And this time I have a plugin. It's called Acvis. And I'm going to run it through the Acvis artwork plugin. So now, see, look, it looks a little bit more traditional. Once again, Alt click on mask to make it a black mask and now I'll paint in white on where I want this to be a little bit more painterly like this 
maybe up here. Maybe too much. Yeah, I want the face to remain like pretty polished. But I'm okay making everything else more painterly, like so. Maybe the background. A bit more. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Works for me. And yeah, that's more or less the workflow I have for working with stable diffusion for characters. Hope this is helpful for everyone and see you next time.